Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a very budget-friendly mono-white aura deck that gets to take advantage of the newly printed Sheltered by Ghosts as a very powerful removal spell that not only gives our creature one extra power and lifelink, but also protects it with Ward 2. So this is perfect for a deck that wants to quickly apply pressure and try and get the game over with before the opponent gets a chance to pay the ward. And then this is also great to search up with Light Paws, Emperor's Voice, which is one of the build around creatures in this strategy, and one of the only eight rares in the deck. So this 2 2 says whenever an aura we control enters, if we cast it, we can search your library for any aura card with mana value less than or equal to that card, with a different name than each aura we control, and put that card on the battlefield attached to Light Paws. So that means that if we enchant a creature with an All That Glitters, for instance, and we don't have a Sheltered by Ghosts in place, yet, we can now use Light Paws to search it up, put it on Light Paws, and maybe remove an opposing permanent. So that's the power of the Emperor's Voice. Then we also have Illuminator Virtuoso as another excellent creature to suit up, as it has built-in Double Strike, and whenever it becomes a target of a spell we control, it gets to connive, so we can draw and discard, maybe discard some spells to give it additional plus one counters, so it can very quickly close out the game. And then another great addition from Duskmorn has been the Optimistic Scavenger, and allows us to go mono white, whereas before we would often have to play a second color, which we could still do in this deck, but feels less necessary necessary and gives us a nice budget alternative. So this gives us a plus one plus one counter whenever an enchantment enters, thanks to Eerie. This is much better than when an enchantment gets cast, which we might see on the Generous Visitor for instance, because that means that if we search up an enchantment with a light pause ability, we now also get a plus one counter from each scavenger we control, as opposed to when we simply cast the spell, which wouldn't happen in this case. And then our other rare is Skrelf, Defector Might, which can protect our valuable 2-drops with its activated ability, can also maybe prevent opposing creatures from blocking in case we don't have some evasion already. And then taking a look at the actual enchantments, some of the more important ones besides Sheltered by Ghosts include All That Glitters, giving plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control, so it also counts Skrelf as an artifact, which is relevant. At one mana there's Ethereal Armor, also recently reprinted. And then we've got Sentinel's Eyes giving plus one plus one and Vigilance. Can also be escaped out of the graveyard by exiling two other cards from our graveyard. So this is very synergistic with the Connive ability from Virtuoso, which can fill the graveyard, making it easier to maybe discard Sentinel's Eyes and then escape it back. And then our final new card is Shard Mage's Rescue as another aura that we can maybe search up with Light Paws in case we're running out of other options, and can also be flashed in at instant speed, giving plus one plus one, as well as giving our creature hexproof until end of turn, so it can protect our creatures from removal in case we don't have a Skrelv handy. And then uh, taking a look at some of the one-off enchantments, there's Glaring Aegis, which we can also maybe search up to tap down an opposing creature to get in for lethal. We've got a Griff's Boon, giving plus one plus one and flying, can also be returned out of the graveyard for four mana. And then we also have a one-off copy of Feather of Flight, which can also be played at instant speed, drawing a card when it enters, and then giving our creature plus one plus one and flying. So in combination with our Griff's Boon, we have multiple ways to give our creatures evasion. And then rounding out a deck, two copies of Lay Down Arms, not an enchantment, but does take advantage of the 19 planes in the mana base, and gives us a little bit of extra interaction besides just the Sheltered by Ghosts. And then the mana base, as we mentioned, 19 planes, could also play Iganjo as a very slight upgrade if you've got it, but that will make our Lay Down Arms a little bit weaker too, so it doesn't seem super necessary. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Good interaction, two threats, and some auras. Opponent with a Lunark Veteran, so maybe an Angel Life Gain deck. There's definitely scarier creatures to exile than the Veteran, although Veteran can also jump repeatedly. I think I still wait. We've got three lanes, so we'll be able to eventually exile a three drop. Opponent already capable of casting Collected Company next turn, thanks to the treasure from Innkeeper. And then gotta hope they don't have a Skyclave Apparition here. I think I start with Virtuoso. Light Paws might be the better one to keep alive. And then next turn by going Light Paws and an Aura, we can get some immediate value. So, and do we see a turn three company? We do, main phase. So this is where things can quickly get out of hand. 
I see Veto, so they are trying to gain life and use that as a win condition with Veto. Yeah, that's gonna quickly add up. So we may have found a target for laydown arms. Although it's not entirely clear which is the bigger target. So I may not have time to deploy Light Paws. This might just be a sheltered plus laydown arms turn. And then Sentinel's Eyes is good value to discard to connive. Exile Veto. And then Exile the Valkyrie attack. And then next turn we can continue with Light Paws. Resplendent, not too scary if they're only gaining two life. Eventually, for six mana, they can pump it up. So, Light Paws into maybe an alt that glitters. Can put the other two mana flying enchantment on Light Paws itself. And I would like the plus one counter. Yeah, I think I get the Feather of Flights, since it's gonna be easier to get to one mana auras with what I have going. And attack for essentially 14. Now opponent does maybe get a window to remove Virtuoso if they go Apparition, pay the ward. Elspeth. Can maybe give their creature a lifelink so they get to start making angel tokens. Alright. And light pause not large enough to block. But I guess they didn't gain any life off Innkeeper and Veteran. So they would gain four at most. Alright, so start with Sentinel's Eyes. Maybe now I can put it on Light Paws, get Ethereal Armor, and that can finish off Elspeth. Even though we don't get to connive. And now it seems safer to keep the uh, rescue available at all times. So Virtuoso requires a chum block. And now Light Paws large enough to block the Resplendent Angel, even if they pump it. So we should be in the driver's seat. And Bishop of Wings could have been very good early. And a Phantom can chump. So our opponents buying themselves some time. Skrelf can eventually give protection as well. And the opponent should have probably blocked a double striking Virtuoso, so they might have uh, misclicked here with a blocking, but yeah, I don't see them winning this game, especially once we play Skrelf. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's missing a real threat. Skrelv is good at protecting them, but we don't really want to load up on Skrelv himself. So this might still be a mulligan. Although, yeah, it's still a close call, since if we mulligan and our opponent opens with a discard spell, we're not going to be too happy. Ah, this is a bit better. Definitely more threat dense. Could get rid of a laydown arms. And keep the enchanted synergies. Opponent on red aggro, so yeah, the removal could have been nice. I think we try and protect our two drop. And start with Skrelv. Opponent's got an answer. And then maybe go for Virtuoso now. 
and then next turn I could play light pause and immediately enchant stuff for value. Can put the sentinel's eyes on virtuoso, light pause gets to search up an ethereal armor for instance. Opponent on gruel aggro. Alright, that seems to be the plan here. And then discarding another sentinel's eyes to connive is good value. So it should for six. Got a bunch of first strike on defense. So it's gonna be hard for the opponent to punch through. Opponent plotting the alchemist, which also triggers Valiant on the challenger, which finds a land. And now a Swiss Spear, so they don't have any good attacks, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got two threats, couple auras. So we can present a very fast clock. Opponent on what could be a blue spirits deck. No one mana flash creature besides the sailor, which I guess I don't really want to trade for. I'll just go Virtuoso and pass. Our opponent flashes in the Sailor anyway. Now they can suit up the Sailor with all sorts of card draw enchantments as well. For now hitting for one. Yeah, the fact that we have lots of one drops is good in the face of counter spells. It means we can have some very efficient turns. Starting with another Scavenger. Into Sentinel's Eyes. Or we can go Ethereal Armor on Virtuoso and then discard Sentinel's Eyes to connive, which I also don't hate. A Bound Spell could be a little awkward, I suppose. And uh, yeah, Sentinel's Eyes can go. Get some triggers. I'll make a 3-3 Scavenger so we can attack into a Rattle Chains, for instance. Even though putting more counters on Virtuoso would deal more damage. And wow, our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kiruga as companion, so it's going to be a slower deck. Yeah, our hand seems okay. Plenty of threats. Opponent leads with Triome and Skralvis Perfect, so now we don't need to worry about something like Stomp taking out my 2-drop. Okay, so a Light Pass versus Virtuoso, always an interesting question. I don't have a third land yet, Virtuoso can help connive into that. So I'm leaning Virtuoso first. It's also gonna be the faster clock if we're worried about our opponent comboing off at some point. As we see, Armadillo discarded. So this could be some sort of uh, discover combo deck with Quintorius. If I draw land, I could go Light Pause into Sentinel's Eyes. Now we just go for all that glitters. And hope to draw a land. So hit you for eight. At least Skrelf contributes as an artifact here. So if our opponent can make a treasure or ramp, they could already win the game next turn with Quintorius, and yeah, Greater Tanuki could do exactly that. So let's see for dead. A land into Quintorius. And there's the land. All right, looks like they don't have it. And we keep drawing a light pause. Now we could lead with Sentinel's Eyes, since it 
and as much power as sheltered, but then we may be drawing to another one mana aura, so we can boost our damage output even more. All right, discard light paws. So this would technically already be a lethal attack, but our opponent could have more life gain, like an armadillo. So I want to get another counter here. And we'll see what happens. If they don't have Quintorius, then at 6 mana they could cast a Carnosaur, which would also get the job done. So yeah, managed to potentially dodge a bullet here, as we get to rank up as well. So yeah, budget Aura, so getting it done. Okay, we're on the play. No creatures means mulligan. And now we've got plenty of creatures. One Virtuoso can go. Facing a Giganta deck. Those tend to be more aggressive creature decks, but there's still a pretty wide range. Turn one mountain, points in that direction, and a Hardfire hero. Probably start with a Virtuoso. And then, if I draw land, I can play Light Paws and an Aura. Discarding Sentinel's Eyes to connive is also good value. Opponent on the red-black aggro combo deck with cards like Cell Sword, I think. So basically the standard deck with maybe a few upgrades for Explore. If we play a Light Paws and then suit up one of our creatures with a 2-mana Aura, we can search up our Sheltered by Ghosts, which is pretty important in this matchup. So can I afford to play Light Paws or do I need to start suiting up Virtuoso? Yeah, probably start there. Ethereal Armor for starters. Found a Sheltered by Ghosts, if that helps. Maybe we actually ditch Light Paws and go all in on Virtuoso, hoping there's no fatal pushes in our future. And then I can give Virtuoso Vigilance. Hit you for 16, 17, so yeah, we're almost dealing lethal. And drawing a land would have done it. But I'll keep both blockers back. Titan Strength Pump Heart Fire. So we could still get combo killed by a Cell Sword, which might be happening here. We can't escape it. Yeah, here it is. And that's 14 damage. So yeah, very close game. Could have gone either way. On to the next one. We are on the play with uh, fine hands, only the one aura, but threats and ways to protect them. Start with Skrelv. And then the plan is turn two Virtuoso, turn three Scavenger plus Ethereal Armor. Thoughtseize will probably take away my Virtuoso. Could also go for the Ethereal Armor, I suppose. Virtuoso down. And then probably want to play around another discard spell and just cast the Ethereal Armor now. So yeah, not the fastest clock right now, hoping to find more auras. Put on just black-whites. Sheltered by ghosts, maybe waiting for something to exile. Gonna be a Grease Fang missing a vehicle to return. Don't see that every day. Alright, and we get a very nice turn here. May as well move all in on one creature with the plus one counters. Hit you for seven. And next turn we might be able to cross the finish line. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Keeper. Multiple creatures, couple good enchantments. 
And we'll see if we start with Virtuoso or Light Paws. Light Paws first into all that glitters gives me access to Sheltered by Ghosts. Which, yeah, might be more important in this matchup. Late on Arms for Lenor Elves also tempting. I'll start here. And I will actually offer the trade for the Elves, I doubt they take it. But now a scavenger with light paws can also give me a bunch of extra plus one counters whenever we search up an enchantment. We're not trying to combo off with Trailblazer. And then Ulvenwald Oddity can transform once they make enough mana, giving everyone haste. That's how they plan to win the game. Alright, so we get to have some fun here. All that glitters get sheltered. Could also go for a lay down arms, take out an elvish mystic. And then still play Virtuoso first. Or I can take out both mana elves to slow them down. Although Virtuoso does close out games a lot faster than Light Paws does. But between Glitters and Armor I think we'll still have enough. So yeah, let's go there. All that Glitters. Get a plus one counter. Search for Sheltered by Ghosts. And then I don't think I care about Trailblazer, we'll just go for the creatures. And our opponent already scoops it up. Yeah, a huge life linker that's only going to get bigger is pretty hard for the green deck to deal with. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Keeper. Scralve into Light Paws. And then we've got some nice enchantments to go with it. A discard spell would be unfortunate here. Just a Plains. Okay. So the first order of business might be to get an ethereal armor. To speed up our clock. Put on blue white, so it might be control. So they might be running temporary lockdown, as well as counter spells. At least sheltered is a way to answer the lockdown. So don't want to play virtuoso. So we could go for all that glitters, or if we're afraid of a counter spell going double one drop might be more efficient. Sure, start with maybe Aegis, because if they have no more lies, then exiling Sentinel's Eyes means we can't escape it. Yeah, that works. So Sentinel's Eyes get Ethereal Armor. And then hope that they don't have the lockdown. Although they might still be able to survive until 4 mana to wipe the board. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge. For now a tap lanes. Alright, so... Yeah, 4 mana sweeper seems likely. So if our opponent's going to wipe the board and remove the protection from Skrelv, maybe I want the protection from Sheltered on the Virtuoso. And for now cast all that glitters. Can maybe get the aura that draws a card. To maybe get to land 4 to go Virtuoso plus Sheltered. Might have been able to get there with another 1 mana aura. Alright, so now if they play Lockdown I can immediately go Virtuoso plus Sheltered. But expecting a Supreme Verdict? No, opponent doesn't have it, and explodes onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have one creature, Rescue for Protection. So this might be a hand where we need to wait until turn 3 to play Virtuoso with Rescue Backup. Depends on the matchup. And of course a discard spell would also be disastrous. Opponent's mono black so far, and uh, yeah, waste not points towards the discard deck. I think I still wait, although if they have discard they can now go for the rescue instead of one of my creatures. But it just feels like if I run out a creature it's immediately going to get removed. A Liliana could also make a sacrifice. Right, Bandit's talent is fine, discard a Sentinel's Eyes which I can later escape. But yeah, Liliana is still going to be brutal. And do they have another discard spell? Opponent's just going to level up. Okay, so this is my chance to get something in play. Also have to watch out with the connive. 
our opponent does get to trigger Waste Knots, so don't really want to be discarding too much. So I think it's going to be a Light Pass, pass a turn, hoping to protect it, and then next turn can all that Glitters and maybe remove one of their permanents. I imagine if they had Liliana they would have played it instead of the Bandit's Talents, but nope. And yeah, this is where if we had the one mana aura that makes a 1-1 one -one soldier token, we would have been able to search it up with Light Paws and then just sacrifice the 1-1 one -one instead. But uh, that's not one of the one-offs that I have in the current list. Would certainly be in the sideboard for matchups like these. Alright, so go for Virtuoso now. Can cast an Ethereal Armor. Although, yeah, I guess that would trigger Waste Knot. I guess if we give them mana, it's not a big deal right now. If I were to discard a land. Otherwise, discard Sentinel's Eyes. Can later still escape it. But yeah, this seems like a pretty terrible matchup. Discard, removal, and Edict Effects is a pretty good recipe for beating this. Okay, Scavenger gives us another threat. Still gotta keep up rescue. And hope they can make me discard my entire hand next turn. Alright, we're all in. Now Light Paws is good to keep, I guess, over Scavenger. We'll give the opponent a blocker, which means they get to protect Liliana. So maybe I actually ditch all that glitters. I guess it doesn't matter since they're just going to plus Liliana anyways. Alright, let's see what they've got. Sanitarium can force me to draw and discard. And yeah, go blank now. Perfect answer. Exiling my whole graveyard as well. Triggers Waste Knots. And yeah, Liliana can plus next turn minus deal with the Virtuoso. So I maybe have one turn to top deck a Flying Enchantment. But they might have removal left as well. And that's a land. Opponent did not plus Liliana, that's surprising. Still gotta go after it. I mean, it's very much possible they have removal in hand, but no. Um, any point in keeping a land in hand? Opponent's just gonna plus and make extra mana, so no. And now Extinction Event can wipe the board. So yeah, her opponent's in full control. Liliana ready to edict on my next creature. So there's no coming back. But uh, we can stick around to let her opponent have some fun. So they can start drawing multiple cards per turn. Shield Root's gonna end the game pretty quickly. Don't think things. Yeah, I can't think of a worse matchup than the Mono Blank discard deck. Packing Fatal Push and Thoughtseize. Just that combination alone is going to be pretty rough for the Aura deck. But uh, especially Liliana is going to be a disaster. I'm tired of your for those that don't know, Waste Knot's actually a community designed card. Back in the M15 core set. Was voted on and then designed by players and put in the set. They haven't done that in a while. But yeah, it is a pretty fun build around for a discard strategy. Alright, so that'll do it. Good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got Skralv, no other creature to go with it. Can potentially suit up Skralv with a Sheltered by Ghosts and Protect with Rescue. So it's not actually a horrible hand. I'll try it. 
So if our opponent has a one drop, we can exile it. If not, we'll probably just wait and keep up rescue. And scavenger was a good draw. And I think I'm okay attacking for one. If they're playing cave, it's more likely to be an aggressive creature deck. Alright, and there we see Light Paws, so it is the mirror. But we luckily have our Sheltered by Ghosts on standby. And I'll keep attacking with Skrelv. We've got a rescue just in case. Selfless Savior, they could have another Sheltered here. And then exile the enchantment instead of the creature, and then the rescue would not work. But uh, Sram can now draw them cards instead. Well, we're kind of all in here. Now we can also use Skrelv naming white to sneak past the opponent's blockers. So this would be an attack for 7. Yeah, it's probably worth it to activate Skrelf. And then next turn, if they don't gain life, we could present lethal. Important that Skrelf doesn't actually give protection, otherwise if our creature has protection from white, all the auras that are white would fall off. So it is slightly different here, just cannot be blocked by creatures of that color. Our opponent does get to return the favor, hoping they pay the ward and go for Scavenger. They might just go for the aura. Alright, perfect. So we set up the trap perfectly with Rescue by tapping Skrelv. Opponent can gain 3 up to 11. So, yeah, maybe they would have still gotten one more turn, but any aura would have done it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Skrelf to protect Virtuoso. And all that glitters to suit them up. Facing blue-white looks like control. So they can now counter the Virtuoso before we get it in play. Which is not where we want to be. Is there an alternative here? All that glitters on Skrelf doesn't seem particularly good. So I think I still try it, and then just hope that they either don't have the counter, or that we draw another threat soon. Opponent does have the no more lives. So yeah, this highlights the difference between being on the play versus on the draw. We had our game against control, where we were able to sneak in our 2-drop. This time we don't. Well, now with Shard Mage's Rescue, we can maybe suit up Skrelv. And with double all that glitters, the damage does add up. Alright, if they have another counter spell, we lose everything. Take five. And do you have a wrath? You do. And we needed another creature here, so yeah, opponent's now in full control. They can even scry with castle end of turn. And this is one of the drawbacks of the aura strategy. If you don't have a creature to enchant, your deck doesn't do anything. As soon as we find a creature, they can counter it, so they don't have to worry about their rescue. And it's going to take the opponent a while to actually close out the game, but yeah, the fairy is going to make it really difficult to keep a foothold in the game. Playline pass. Well, if you're in a hurry, you could easily just concede and move on. We'll play it out just for science, but opponent's not too far from ultimating a Teferi, which will keep exiling stuff over and over. We do have a sheltered by ghost, so technically if I draw a creature, I can immediately enchant it, trying to remove Teferi with rescue as backup. But our opponent's hand needs to be exceptionally bad for that to work out. You know what? Since another board wipe will do it too. Opponent 
Clones go to discard to hand size. I feel bad for them. And there's a Virtuoso. Do you have a counter spell? You do. Can pay, but they likely have another one. Well, we did manage to bait out two counters at least. Small consolation prize. Next turn to Fairy can ultimate, so it's our last chance to find a creature to cast Sheltered to at least reset the loyalty. But once the Fairy ultimates, I think we can throw in the towel since there's no way we can beat an emblem exiling our stuff each turn. Alright, I think that'll do it. Good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing a second land. Double Scavenger can do some damage, although Rescue... Not the most exciting aura to start out. But if we find a second land, then Light Paws into Feather of Flight, for instance, can get any two mana enchantments and get more counters. So I think there's enough upside that it's worth keeping. And even if we miss a land for a turn, I can still deploy another scavenger. Alright, opponent on what could be a Phoenix deck. So maybe I wait on deploying Light Paws until I can protect it with Rescue. Or I could even go Scavenger, keep up Rescue. Let's go with Virtuoso. Because the opponent's deck is going to be filled to the brim with cheap interaction. So I don't want to lose Light Paws that easily. And there we see Volcanic Spite. Could point towards maybe a slightly different combo deck with uh, creativity instead. So not quite a Phoenix build. Now I'm liking Scavenger into Aegis just to pump up toughness, maybe get our creatures out of burn range. So even if they are on Phoenix, a Lightning Axe would not be enough. Let's go to Fable. And Sheltered was a good draw. Probably fine to diversify my threats a little bit. Although, let's see, I guess next turn they could still deal 3 damage and pay the ward. So better to keep going on the same Scavenger. Don't really expect any bounce spells. Well, looks like we may not need a light pause after all. Alrun's Epiphany, discard it. So our opponent's going big. Another Fable, now we can just fly over. So we'll see if that works. And our opponent explodes, awesome. Alright, so we get to see our mono white auras in action, and yeah, this deck certainly packs a punch, especially for being so budget friendly, but it is a high variance strategy, as most aura decks tend to be, so some games your opponent just has the right interaction, whether that's a cheap discard spell or removal spell, and your entire game plan falls apart, so you will certainly have games like that where you don't get to do anything, but on the flip side you'll also have games where you quickly steamroll the opponent and they don't get to really interact, so not a deck that's necessarily going to lead to the the most interesting games, but for quickly getting your daily wins done, this is perfect. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!